Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office for Friday, December the 8th, 2023. We have some big weather updates to share with you in today's video, not only on the U.S. with that snowstorm that is now expected to impact the Northeast by the latter part of this weekend in early next week, but the extension and rapid amplification of the EAJ or East Asian jet stream over the Pacific will unleash some very big storms that you all need to be aware of, especially if you live along the west coast of the United States. First things first, we're looking at the GFS model over the United States, including for southern Canada, because we have that system that is going to be developing tomorrow into Sunday. And then it's going to bring a lot of rain, severe weather, and some flood concerns over the southeast with really intense snowfall. So uh, this is for this afternoon, um, or this evening I should say, we have showers and storms that do try to develop. There's your surface low. We got some colder air on the northern side, so that's why there's going to be some snow falling across the Dakotas and northern Minnesota. But this system is going to shape up pretty nicely by the time we go into Sunday and this is a Sunday morning here, uh, not night, uh, well, it's night, uh, for about 4 in the morning. So in the wee early mornings of Sunday, we have this nice, intense rain uh, storm that's going to be stretching from the southeastern U.S. all the way up into the northeast. And again, limited cold air at first. That's why we're not going to be seeing a lot of snow um, with this right away. Models have evolved pretty differently than what we had like four or five days ago when we were looking at a pretty massive snowstorm for the, the upper Midwest. Well, that has changed today, and we're just going to see a lot of rain to begin. It's not until we get into Sunday night when the storm really gets a little more dynamic. We have more intense rainfall here. See these dark green colors? That stretches over the I-95 corridor all the way from North Carolina into Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey. If you are across, say, Connecticut, if you're on Rhode Island, if you're in Massachusetts, yeah, there's going to be a lot of intense rainfall, maybe some severe weather here. We can see water spouts and some damaging winds for sure as this surface low uh, tracks its way up towards the northeast. And also we have the snow that is going to be filling in because now we have the colder air trying to push onto the system while we have the warm air that is trying to push onto the system from the south. So we're going to begin to see a dynamic system setting up here and towards the end of the GFS forecast for the three-day period for early Monday morning seems very solid at this point. That's where we're going to see our storm. There has been some timing adjustments, but right now we think right uh, on an overall average scale on the forecast that this is where the system is going to be. And I'll tell you what, this is some pretty intense, heavy, wet snow that is going to be accumulating all the way from eastern Pennsylvania into central New York, northern Vermont and New Hampshire into northern Maine. We're looking at blizzard conditions, power outages, you name it. This is a dynamic system that's going to rapidly um, develop as it encounters baroclinic flow, barotropic flow as well. By early to mid-afternoon on Monday, December the 11th, we can see where our system's going to be. Look at that. Snow is really coming down there. The dark blue colors illustrate heavy snow. We got some freezing rain, sleet, slushy snow in between it all with the rain along the um, main coast, such as Portland, Maine. Going to see quite a bit of rainfall. Now, that's really all there is for the United States to track for as far as the weather goes over the next five days. We do see another system try to develop here, but more than likely, things are going to get quiet for the time being. It's really going to be now back towards the west where we're going to have to really watch the long-range forecast very closely. More on that in just a second, though. Snowfall totals over the next four days. This is what you're going to see with our, that nor'easter that's going to rapidly develop, potentially 6 to 12 inches of snow. That's what I'm thinking over northern Vermont and New Hampshire, maybe 3 to 8 inches of snow potentially for central New York on the ensemble from the GFS. 
Then, of course, if you are up there across the extreme southeastern ca Canadian border, you can see anywhere between 8 to 12 inches. The Rockies will see a fair share of snow as well for the higher elevations, possibly 6 to 12 inches of snowfall, with maybe as much as a foot and a half of snow over the northern Cascades there of Washington. QPF amounts or rainfall totals, uh, quantitative uh, precipitation totals, we can see uh, where this is is um of course look at all the the orange colors that indicates anywhere between maybe an inch to a couple of inches but again this is going to be in the form of snow most likely the further north you go so areas to the southeast you're likely to see at least about an inch or more of rainfall potentially anywhere between an inch or so of rainfall for the valleys of washington and oregon and but again the atmospheric rivers of pineapple expresses will shut down temporarily before we get into right around the end of December where a big massive weather pattern is developing and we're going to go right over there to the other side of the uh, United States while well, we're actually going to focus now on the Pacific because this is a very big deal. As you all know it takes a lot of agreement among the models okay and it takes such a pattern shift like this to get my attention, to absolutely grab my attention from the United States, to focus on the Pacific Basin, because what you're about to see, folks, is historic, okay? Potentially historic, very concerning if you're in California, because the way the jet stream is going to set up, typical for a very strong, potentially a super El Nino, which we are already approaching at the moment with sea surface temperatures in the 3.4 region, already approaching 2.2 Celsius above average. That is mind-boggling high uh, on a uh, long-term climatological standpoint. So let's focus in on what we're looking at here. This is the 250 millibar jet stream uh, flow map, okay? So we're looking at where jet planes fly. This is not at the surface. This is where commercial airliners fly, like 747s, the triple sevens, you know, you name it. You know, when you go to J Japan or China, you're gonna cut, um, you're gonna fly there via a jet and you're gonna fly at like say 35,000 feet. This is where that jet is located. So, this is 35,000 feet above the surface, but this gives us an idea what our weather pattern is doing now and what it's going to be doing in the next say 10 to 15 days, if that makes sense. Now, before we actually move forward with the time, I want to give you all um, a perspective of what we're actually looking at as far as topography or uh, geographical locations. So this is Alaska over here, okay? This is the Bering Sea, so we're going to put Bering for Bering. This is the Pacific side, by the way. This is California. This is kind of the Canadian coast, the um, California coast, and Parts of Baja is showing up here. And so this is the United States all over in here, okay? Hawaii, for reference, is down here to the south. Here is Japan, Siberia, all in over here. So I hope that kind of clears out any confusion because there is a lot of lines on the map and it's really hard to decipher where we're looking at. So I hope I did a good job. Let me know in the comment section if I didn't, because if I didn't, then I guess I need to try a little harder. So now let's move the GFS forward in time because this pattern evolves very quickly. When it catches Daniel Swain, which by the way is a climatologist out of UCLA, so the University of LA in Los Angeles, he is one of the best climatologists that I know on social media. He knows what he's talking about. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to his blog posts, uh, Weather West, and there will be a YouTube channel or a link to his YouTube channel. You all need to check this guy out now. I'm being dead serious. Once you're done watching this video, you need to check him out because that guy knows his stuff. He is very good. Also, check out Ronald Martinez on Twitter. He also knows his stuff as well because he does go to Delta College in Stockton and he is um, getting ready to become a meteorologist. So these are real sources, folks, where I'm getting this from and also in my own perspective on what we're going to be seeing. So this is a big deal. 
those two people have been jumping the gun on this pattern change and it takes a lot for Daniel Swain by the way and Ronald Martinez to take action on that and so let's kind of fast forward this um really quickly so as you all know we have a really wavy jet stream. This is what we call a destructive interference pattern where we have um, th things canceling out each other. We have the trough kind of amplifying the ridge downstream. We have a ridge amplifying upstream, helping to amplify the trough downstream. Lot, you know, you get the idea. We have a amplified wave pattern. Models do not do good at resolving equations when it comes to a amplified wave pattern okay and that's why we're seeing crazy outcomes rain or not in california hot or cold you know because of this pattern that evolves now what comes next is more consistent and there's more solid agreement among the ensembles not just from the gefs but also from the euro ensemble and the canadian ensemble which again makes up the super blend and even the super blend is even picking up on this signal very well which really adds a lot of fidelity to the gefs and the gfs of what i'm about to show you more realistic than not and in other words it's more likely to occur or actually verify than not even so it's pretty far out in time and that's why this is one of the reasons why i will show you all the way until the end of the forecast model on the GFS. So this is, by the way, Saturday, or yeah, Saturday, December the 16th. Again, we have a low approaching California. That's going to be the next one that we have to monitor. That's going to bring a lot of rainfall. I'm seeing a little bit of discharge of maybe about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch of rain. And across the mountainous terrain, maybe the valleys between a quarter to a half an inch. So a, a, a very impressive system, um, nonetheless, going to start things uh, more active for us than not. So what goes on is this low then moves out, right? We have a little bit of a block here, but we have this undercutting with the jet at 250 millibars. And this is what we call more now transitioning into more of a neutral state of the jet, not neither constructive or destructive interference. And then once we go forward out in time, we have more constructive interference that seems to take place here. And what I mean by that is there's not much... Uh, ri there's no ridges popping out of nowhere like we saw four or five model runs ago. We're seeing propagation with this, which is a sign of what's to come. Now, I want you all to please pay attention here on what is going to happen in the, the Western Pacific, what we call our EAJ or East Asian Jet Stream. The jet stream develops over Asia because of the Himalayas, because of the very strong geostrophic uh, or uh, I think I said it right. I hope I did, Ethan. Um, I'm learning some of these words, by the way, from Ethan B., which is really nice. You can go check out his YouTube channel, too. Link in the description. But the, the, the temperature gradient is really going to increase here, and this is, this is the jet that we're all talking about, folks. This is going to be a very big deal, and look how strong this gets. I mean, this is mind-boggling. It's not showing up just on this run, folks. If we even go back to the 12Z run from yesterday, it is even showing up there. Not as prominently, but it is showing up really well, and especially over the last three model runs, we're seeing a very, very amplified strong signal on the deterministic output here of this very strong EAJ. Now, of course, this is going to extend further east, which is needed for California storms, especially a storm sequence. And so what you're going to see here is just look at this. This thing is just butterscotch straight. It just is kind of taking beeline aim for Southern California and even into Central California. And that's going to really set up what is known as a persuasive pattern change. Now, of course, this is far out in time. We're not exactly sure where and how this is going to all evolve. The confidence is much higher that the EAJ that you're seeing here will evolve in a very quick fashion. How far this extends eastward, we just don't know yet. Well, one thing for sure is it is extremely 
extremely strong for the central and even the eastern pacific basin anomalously strong by all means you don't see 217 or 225 knots very often north of hawaii like this at such a low latitude i mean this is 35 degrees north in latitude this is what you would call a mid to low latitude um eaj jet or eaj or east asian jet stream that really extends here with a very strong um, uh, thermal to wind gradient to the north, as you see here, and a ridge here to the south, what we call a barotropic ridge at 250 millibars. So I hope none of you are planning to fly westward because tell your pilots that the EAJ is going to be very strong and you might have to divert, like fly down like this instead because you're going to run into a lot of wind, headwind if you do so, and probably some severe to extreme turbulence as well. Looking at the 500 millibar layer, there is definitely a air mass response for sure with this. Look at this, this blobbiness of or a red and green colors very very far below average heights here in the north and northeast pacific the opposite of what is known as the ridge or the ridiculous resilient ridge not going to see that at all very enhanced here with the flow from the west in fact so enhanced is if we even look at the 500 millibar layer that's 131 knots at 18,000 feet and look at the surface response here look at just how intense this is that by the way is near hurricane force winds off from that surface slow so this is no joke at all this is really this is a big big deal if this actually um ends up propagating any further east or if we get any surface slows that try to bomb out and move up like this Boy, this could really be uh, this could really be a big deal for California with numerous storms, heavy rain, atmospheric rivers that could bring tremendous amounts of rainfall, a lot of forcing, a lot of wind energy. This is something, folks, that we really, really have to monitor, especially when Daniel Swain talks about it and Ronald Martinez. That's going to sum it up for today's video, folks. Before I do in the video, though, I do want to show you all my website my sacramento weather center office i'll probably be doing a lot more blog posts now with this upcoming pattern change that supposedly the models are showing so if you all want to uh, check that out there's a link in the description below this video where you can find links and the blog post it is really awesome you guys can't miss out on it at all then of course be sure to check out my Twitter page. There will be a link in the description. There I am. I posted that like an hour ago on that upcoming pattern. Boy, I mean, this is really, really concerning. Even, again, Ronald, if we go really quick to Ronald's Twitter page, he even has talked about this. Yes, big shout out and does go to Ronald Martinez. Me and him are actually going to meet up tomorrow. Um, and we're going to be talking about with what we're seeing here i think it's time ronald um so yeah this is really concerning here uh when someone from the uh university uh or delta college i should say in stockton uh post about this yeah this gets my attention so that's gonna do it folks share like and subscribe and i'll be back with you more um maybe tonight might have to do a live stream on this depending on latest model trends and things like that Otherwise, I'll see you back here tomorrow.